Good afternoon or good evening, as the case may be. And welcome to the free for our webinar series, Empower Yourself During COVID-19 with Seth and the Law of Attraction. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Rick Stack. I'm the president of New Awareness Network, Inc. and the Seth Educational Institute. Uh, we're one of the publishers of the Seth books by Jane Roberts. I was a student of Seth and Jane Roberts in the 1970s, during which time I had the privilege to attend over 100 Seth sessions given at those classes. I've been teaching classes on consciousness studies, dreams, out-of-body experiences, and the Seth material for over 40 years now. In this webinar series, we will be exploring the concept that you create your own reality, also known as the law of attraction, and how this applies to understanding global events like the current COVID-19 pandemic. Now, also how you can use this concept individually for very practical purposes, like strengthening your immune system, creating a safe reality in all areas, and encouraging peace of mind. For those of you unfamiliar with Seth, Seth is the internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher who spoke through the author Jane Roberts while she was in trance and coined the phrase, you create your own reality. The books written by Seth have sold over 8 million copies. They've been translated into over a dozen languages. Seth's books are widely respected by thought leaders in the consciousness studies movement. And you can find testimonials on the back of the book, Seth Speaks, for example, by Jane Roberts, by people like Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, and Louise Hay. So, one of the basic principles of the Seth material is this concept that you create your own reality according to your thoughts, emotions, beliefs, and expectations. Further, the art of creating reality lovingly and wisely, becoming a conscious co-creator as it, as it is, with all that is, a conscious co-creator with all that is, this is one of the main things we're all setting out to learn in physical reality, according to Seth. Here's, here's a, a Seth quote on this. You are in physical existence to learn and understand that your energy, translated into feelings, thoughts, and emotions, causes all experience. There are no exceptions. There is no effect in the exterior world that does not spring from an inner source. There is no motion that does not first occur within the mind. Now this concept has direct applications for understanding and dealing with the current COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, Seth has discussed in some detail the underlying spiritual, psychological, and social causes of epidemics from the perspective that people create their reality. And we will go into that shortly. Now, first, just a quick note and a little background. It's important to note here that one of the ways you use the concept that you create reality to create a safe reality is by using your common sense. So in anything we talk about during this webinar series, it should not be taken as advice counter to the precautions that the medical community is putting forth with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic. What we are presenting in these webinars will be information regarding using the power of thought and connecting with your inner wisdom for practical purposes, in addition to following the common sense precautions that are be, being used throughout the, the, the United States and the world. Okay, so again, one of the main concepts we're gonna be exploring here is this. You create your reality 
according to your thoughts, emotions, beliefs, and expectations. Now, that's your palette. We can, we can include the imagination there. This is the palette of your inner psyche. And from there, you create your reality. Whatever you focus on, whatever you concentrate upon, whatever thoughts and emotions and beliefs that you have been concentrating upon, that's what's going to be materialized in your world, your outer experience, your body. To change your life, you change the inner landscape of your psyche, and you take action on it in physical reality. It's a combination. Here's a, a quote from Seth on this. In each life, you are meant to check the exterior environment in order to learn your inner condition. The outer is a reflection of the inner. Whatever thoughts and emotions and beliefs that you have been concentrating upon, that's what gets materialized. When man realizes, this is a Seth quote, when man realizes that he himself creates his personal and universal environment in concrete terms, then he can begin to create a private and universal environment much superior to the one that is the result of haphazard and unenlightened constructions. This is our main message to the world. And this is the next line in man's conceptual development, which will make itself felt in all fields. Now, you can find very similar ideas in many different systems. This is not Seth's knowledge. Seth doesn't claim to be anything more than a teacher. He's a good one, but he has said that this knowledge has been given throughout the centuries. And of course, it appears in many different traditions. For example, similar concepts can be found in the New Thought movement started in the 19th century. Similar concepts can be found in the Religious Science movement started in 1927 by Ernest Holmes. And actually, this stuff really actually dates back to Plato and Plotinus and their theories. I don't really have time to go into all of that now, but I would like to mention about the scientific arena because, you know, if this is true, if people do create the reality, if thought really affects reality, you know, by now we should have some scientific evidence of that. Well, the fact is that we do. We have like actually plenty of it. It's just that it goes against the paradigm. Studies, and I'll just mention a few here, studies in the area of intention strongly support with high confidence the concept that directed thought can affect external reality. There was a whole series of studies called the, the DeMil or DMIL studies, Direct Mental Influence of Living Systems. And in those studies, uh, it was demonstrated that a directed thought can affect living systems like plants. Somebody thinks something, you can affect a plant, a bacteria, fish, seeds, animals, people. Thought can even affect inanimate objects like water and random event generators also known as random number generators. Some of you might be familiar with some of this. Just briefly, a random number generator is something like flipping a coin, but it's flipping a coin electronically. So if they put somebody in front of a computer and they try to have them affect the computer, which is programmed to flip a coin, so to speak. And that's simplifying it greatly, okay? However, people can affect the computer. They can affect the coin course. Now, experiments with random number generators, and I'll just mention this is one of the category of experiments in psi research that have produced results at the six sigma level. In other words, the odds against this happening by chance exceed a billion to one. 
So what do these experiments show? They show with high confidence that intention, directed thought, can indeed affect external reality. Now, you could argue about whether that applies on the macro level, but it's actually, as, as much as science can prove it, as much as science can pr prove anything, because science never proves anything, they just support it so that it's unlikely to have occurred by chance alone, on the highest confidence levels, we know that science supports this theory or concept that thought affects reality. Science has gone as far as they, not as far as they can with the whole subject, but as far, the, the highest level of confidence in these experiments. So let's say that we are reasonable, a reasonable person looking at the scientific evidence and we say, well, yeah, we can see that thought, that thought is can affect external reality. Well, what does that mean? It would seem to mean that thought is something. Directed thought is something, some sort of energy, some sort of force that can impact the external world. So for those who say that the concept that thought can affect the external world is complete nonsense, such people are either not aware of the scientific evidence in the area, which is the, in the case in many instances, or you have people, some people, including scientists, that are aware of these experiments, but they literally are resisting the weight of the evidence because it flies in the face of old entrenched paradigms. Now, it's certainly true that when you are trying to prove this stuff scientifically, you are usually dealing with small but significant effects because of the limitations and the stringent requirements of doing things in a laboratory. But the real laboratory that we all are concerned about is the macro laboratory of our actual physical lives. Now, again, just reasonably speaking, even on the bare face of the scientific evidence, it does follow logically that some of these findings might be important for understanding what's really going on in a universe that we don't fully understand. But of course, people in general and even the scientific community is very slow on picking up on concepts that go against the paradigm, the old belief systems. Now, the Seth material and other thought systems throughout history are rather more forthcoming about all of this and affirmatively state that this principle applies to all of the events in our individual lives and to global mass events. Again, we'll be getting into that. But this is foundational. All you have to do, is a Seth quote, all you have to do is realize that you're free, that you form reality as you know it through your most intimate desires and thoughts and fears. You change the exterior circumstances by changing your thoughts and your desires and by forgetting your fears. There is no other way. There has never been another way. And by the way, uh, you know, obviously there's more to it than this in that uh, you don't sit in a corner and just do this, okay? Physical reality is actually an energy system, okay? So, so when you are changing the energy in your psyche, you will find yourself with impulses that arrive in line with these newly accepted beliefs. And then it is up to you to act on them physically. So it is a, always a combination of changing the internal uh, belief systems and also acting uh, it out in physical reality, acting on the, in, uh, on the impulses that are going to lead you to uh, all of the uh, coincidences and synchronicities that need to occur in order to materialize something. So, 
there are individual events that you create in your life, right? And there are mass events like a pandemic, like a war, world war, like epidemics that we don't even recognize as epidemics, like cancer. We don't even think of it as an epidemic, but it, it, fundamentally it's very similar. It's an illness that is happening on a, on a mass level, and most people don't understand that there's a direct connection with their inner psyches and any illness. If you really want to start curing cancer or dealing with curing cancer, you don't just treat the symptoms. You can treat the symptoms, but you don't do that. You also, you also treat the, the causal factors in the psyche, in the human psyche. So mass events, individual events are a reflection of the individual's inner psyche, the thoughts, emotions, and beliefs and expectations that an individual has been focusing on and has been concentrating on. Mass events are what? The materializations of the thoughts, emotions, and beliefs of large or huge numbers of people with the corresponding physical actions that they take in line with these beliefs. Somebody who believes that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world is going to behave and take actions in line with that belief, but they are, their thoughts are also actually literally interacting with the matrix of energy, attracting events that will serve to prove to them that whatever they believe is true. I mean, that's the problem. That's one of the big problems. You don't understand you create your own reality. Whatever anybody believes is materialized for them. So everybody believes their beliefs very strongly. So before we go into the underlying causes of epidemics, let's talk a little about what are the practical implications for all of this, for something like the current COVID-19 pandemic or other mass events? Well, first of all, very important. If you create your own reality, then that means that you have the power to create a reality of safety. Safety in terms of your health, safety in terms of landing on your feet financially, if that's a concern. Even in times like this, you have the power to create a reality of safety. How does one accomplish this? Well, this is a complex topic, but the short answer is that you become skillful at creating your reality. And in general, in general, you do that through self-examination, self-understanding, learning and practicing the methodology of how to change and manipulate thoughts, emotions, and beliefs, and by connecting with your inner self and your inner wisdom. Now that last step is crucial. Because in order to really be able to step out of the old framework of limiting beliefs that is rampant in our culture, you need that direct knowing that you can only get from your own connection with your inner self, your greater identity, your inner wisdom. That will help you step out of the, the old framework. and be able to understand the concept that you create your own reality on a deep emotional level and not just intellectually. Okay, now um, before we continue, and we have a lot more to cover today, uh, before we continue, some people have asked us if there's gonna be any sort of continuation of these webinars, you know, for further study. So, you know, we, we do offer courses, and I'm just gonna take one minute to, uh, you know, point you in the right direction, tell you what we, we're offering. We have, uh, we, we have an, uh, I teach an online Seth intensive course. It's a six week online course. Right now I'm teaching approximately once a year. 
Uh, the next one's in the fall. We also do the online Seth Dream and Lucid Dream course. That's another six-week online course, and that's going to be held also in the fall. All the webinars are recorded. They can be viewed at any time. You can get more information at SethCenter.com. Now, we also, though, something that if you're interested in doing now, we also offer, I teach an ongoing online Seth class every second and fourth Tuesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And Dave Selak um, is going to teach us an ongoing dream study class, and that is going to be that is held once, uh, twice a month. Also, the first and third Monday. All webinars are recorded; can be viewed at any time. Okay. The information and registration for that is at SethClass.com. Now we uh, normally only open these classes to those who have taken one of our core curriculum courses, the six-week courses. But due to the current pandemic, uh, we are waiving that requirement and anybody can join uh, these uh, ongoing class. The only thing that we ask is that if by any chance you haven't read Seth Speaks and you're a complete beginner, just pick up that book or Kindle book and uh, you, you can start, start reading it uh, a, as you are um, studying with us. Seth has a phrase he sometimes uses for the widely held mass belief systems about the nature of reality. And I will say that these are the underlying causes of, uh, in general, of many, if not all, of the world's worst problems. He calls these beliefs the official line of consciousness. So the official line of consciousness states, one, you don't create your reality. Bad stuff can happen to you just by chance. Bad luck. Or bad events or accidents can happen to you because it's the will of God. Either it's the will of God or really, the, or really just stuff happens. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because the universe is really not that orderly. And in fact, there's no greater meaning or purpose in the universe. And death is the end. And we evolve from the apes. And that's it. Two, the official line of consciousness says the universe is not a safe place. The universe is not safe. Why? Because you don't create your own reality. And, you know, all this stuff can happen to you. Disease, terrorist attacks. the economic problems of the culture. You are subject to all of this and have no power in this belief system. You could try, you might do well, but it could happen. And really what happens is many, believe, many people believe, just for example, that as old age, and this shows you the secondary level of belief, okay? So there, this is the foundational beliefs you have a secondary level, like, well, as you get older, it's far more likely I'm going to get sick. In fact, I pretty much expect to get sick. Well, many people do. Many people believe that old age, uh, uh, it means disease. And they expect it. And, of course, you, you get what you expect. Now, there's all kinds of mitigating, you know, it's not as simple as that. There's mitigating forces. If a person really believes in their worth, concentrates on their health, is happy, then their immune system is going to function much better. But there are tons of people who are unnecessarily getting ill because they're literally, literally setting themselves up for it. And number three, the official line of consciousness says the human race is a tainted, flawed species. Many people believe that human nature is inclined toward what? Inclined toward greed, war, or just outright evil. You can find that both in the religious belief systems and you can find it in the scientific belief systems that say that we evolved from the apes and all we really care about is survival of the fittest. So many people believe that the human race 
as a whole can't really be trusted fully to be loving, cooperative, or even sane. In fact, it seems quite illogical to assume that. But everybody knows that they're a member of the race. If you don't trust the race, and you think the human race deep down is inclined to evil or driven by, you know, savage, uncontrolled impulses in the unconscious, if you believe that, you're not really ever going to really fully trust yourself. And what happens is people start putting guard, guards on themselves. They start putting up all kinds of defenses, which they're, they're not really fully aware of, to, to try to, for the ego to try to control things because they're so afraid of their spontaneous selves, to make sure that they behave properly. These are the kind of unconstructive beliefs that are foundational that can lead to illness and other problems. So that's a quick summary of the official line of consciousness. Now, obviously, there's more to it. And all kinds of belief systems that are based on it. Here's a helpful self-quote on this. As long as you believe that either good events or bad ones are meted out by a personified God, as the reward or punishment for your actions. Or on the other hand, that events are largely meaningless, chaotic, subjective knots in the tangled web of an accidental Darwinian world. Then you cannot consciously understand your own creativity or play the role in the universe that you are capable of playing as individuals or as a species. <clears throat> now, there's a field of science called psychoneuroimmunology where they study and research the connection between the mind and the body, between the mind and the immune system. Now, research in that field has shown that positive affect can significantly strengthen your immune system and negative affect can weaken it positive affect being the propensity to experience positive emotions like joy and contentment and confidence. So basically, if you can be happy or be in a positive state, they've shown that it literally strengthens your immune system uh, with um, uh, the, the kind of cells that battle um, cancer, for example, or, or battle um, other illnesses. So. In those terms alone, if you can convince yourself that you're safe and protected, you're going to feel less anxious and more relaxed, and your immune system will function better. So actually, whether it's true or not that you create reality, convincing yourself that you have the power to create a reality of safety so that you feel safer, it, that could be useful to strengthen your immune system. I mean, as long as you're still using common sense precautions, you know, following reasonable common sense precautions, anything that makes you feel safer and happier is going to strengthen your immune system. Now, however, the concept that you create your own reality goes far beyond that and states that your thoughts and beliefs are actually interacting with inner and outer reality and attracting and creating the events you experience into your life. So again, this means you have the power to effectively create a reality of safety. This means that you have the power to effectively create a reality of abundance, both of which, according to Seth, are our natural state. According to, to Seth, our natural state is a state of safety, abundance, and grace. Now, with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic, well, this would mean that you have the power to create a reality of being safe, of winding up safe, either you, of either never getting COVID-19, or if you do get it, be one of the vast majority of people who are either asymptomatic or get mild to moderate flu symptoms.
Well, the majority, they ask majority, majority, but the point is you can be in that category. You can create that so that you're going to come through this okay. And you can create a reality where you come through this okay financially. Now, furthermore, the concept that you create your reality can help us to understand what the pandemic is. That something like a pandemic is not some evil or random or accidental force that has just hit humanity because it's this random universe. The pandemic has not happened because it really is a scary, merciless universe out there. The pandemic has not happened because humankind is really damned and bound for destruction because God is judging us. No, this theory that you create your own reality offers another alternative. This concept points to a universe with reason in it, where the pandemic has a reason. And it has to do with the inner problems that humanity is dealing with and is meant to solve. Okay. So let's try to get some understanding about the possible underlying causes for the COVID-19 pandemic and epidemics in general. And I'm going to let Seth uh, speak for himself here because he's rather eloquent about it. This is from his book, The Individual and Nature of Mass Events. The question of epidemics, for example, cannot be answered from a biological standpoint alone. It involves great sweeping psychological attitudes on the part of many. When you consider epidemics to be the result of viruses and emphasize their biological stances, then it seems that the solutions are very obvious. You learn the nature of each virus and develop an inoculation. The causes of epidemics are not biological. According to Seth, biology is simply the carrier of a deadly intent, in quotes. Now, no person becomes ill unless that illness serves a psychic or psychological reason. Inner reality and private experience give birth to all mass events. Man cannot disentangle himself from the natural context of his physical life. His culture, his religion, his psychologies, and his psychological nature together form the context within which both private and mass events occur. Okay, so now let's get into a little bit more detail about underlying causes. And for this, we're gonna look at some information that Seth had on our epidemics that occurred in the past, particularly the plague and epidemics in general. In some historical periods, this is Seth quote, also from his book, The Individual and the Nature of Mass Events. In some historical periods, the plight of the poor was so horrible, so unendurable, that outbreaks of the plague occurred, literally resulting in a complete destruction of large areas of the environment in which such, in which such social, political, and economic conditions existed. Individually, each victim, in quotes, was to one extent or another a victim of apathy, despair, or hopelessness, which automatically lowered bodily defenses. Literally, individual mental problems of sufficient severity emerge as social mass diseases. The environment in which an outbreak occurs points at the political, sociological, and economic conditions that have evolved causing, causing such disorder. Sometimes such epidemics are eventually responsible for the overthrow of governments 
the loss of wars. And we don't have to look very far to see the kind of political, sociological, and economic problems that exist in our world today that do need to be addressed. In terms of the species integrity, your mental states are then highly important. Despair or apathy is a biological enemy. Social conditions, political states, economic policies, and even religious or philosophical frameworks that foster such mental states, i.e. despair or apathy, bring about a biological retaliation. They act like a fire applied to a plant. There are greater forces at play than just the dictators or leaders of countries, whether they're dictators or not. And even those dictators are a reflection of the belief systems of many. The epidemics then serve many purposes. Warning that certain conditions will not be tolerated. Epidemics, by their public nature, speak of public problems, problems that sociologically threaten to sweep the individual to psychic disaster as the physical materialization does biologically. These are the reasons also for the range or the limits of various epidemics, why they sweep through one area and leave another clear, why one in the family will die and another survive. For in this mass venture, the individual still forms his or her reality. Each individual, and this is how the, the concept goes, each individual within the mass events will participate precisely and exactly to the degree that their beliefs, thoughts, and emotions fit in with what they individually want to, uh, want to create. So you'll have people that are completely untouched, for example, by a pandemic. You have tons of people that are they're saying that are asymptomatic. Well, you know, if they're asymptomatic, they didn't really have a disease. They're fine. They might be passing the disease on, but they never had a disease. Wasn't a disease for them. So each individual participates in precisely the manner in which their psyche and belief system uh, sets it up. When a species overproduces, the incidence of, say, epidemics grow. This applies to human populations as well as to the animals. And we could, you know, this is a long discussion, but it's definitely uh, an important one. We don't have time to go into it right now. Okay. <clears throat> 